It's our absolute pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you for joining us. And together with me on the panelists is Lara Schoenfeld. Um, Lara is my co-founder of Playsets. So Lara, we'd love to see your beautiful face. Um, Meg, oh, there we go. You need to enable my face. It's oh, my face. word. Has that actually <laughs> happened tonight? I am so sorry. Let's just quickly do that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah. So lovely to be with you. There we go. Let's enable. Let's have a look. Is it enabled? There we go. <laughs> Yay, you're there. <laughs> I'm so pleased because I wouldn't be able to do your talk tonight. I'm delighted that you're there. <laughs> and together with us here with Lara and I is the Play Sense Adjudicator. One of our kids dressed up as our adjudicator tonight. And our adjudicator is not going to say a word. Our adjudicator is watching because we've got some amazing prizes that are available for you all tonight. Um, so our adjudicator is going to be assisting us. And right at the end, we're going to be doing an amazing draw. So thank you for filling out the poll. Um, a lot of you have filled it out. So let's have a look who is here tonight from the poll. Um, so let's see. Let's see who you are. I'm going to share the results. There we go. So by far the majority of you, 75%, 74% are working full time. So Lara and I know all about that because we are, I suppose we flexi time moms, Lara. We do work full time, but we're also there for our kids. We can do ourselves, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then um, the most of you have got um, two to three year olds, which is fabulous. And for the majority of you, you're the ones at home in the care of a family member or nanny, 73%. Um, and um, for all of you, well, for 50% of you, individual attention from a nurturing teacher is really important. So that's absolutely awesome that you've all filled that in. Thank you for doing that for us. That was super to see and um, super to know who's with us tonight. So I do have to tell you that um, we are extremely excited about today and about tonight. We are going to have some fun and we're going to do it the play sense way. We're going to be absolutely having a ball with you. Um, and you know, Lara and I, a couple of years ago, got together and we said, you know what, we're going to write a book on how to play with your little one. And in fact, we actually kicked it off, Lara. We actually started it. We've got the outline for it. And then a couple of months later, that got parked. And then we decided, you know what, let's not write a book. Let's rather start a revolution. So that's what tonight is about. We're going to start a play revolution because we believe that playing with little ones is the most important thing that we could do with them. And so tonight, our revolution begins. So as I mentioned, um, I'm, um, Lara is my co-founder of PlaySense. Um, she is my partner in crime with everything PlaySense. She is also the writer of our incredible um, curriculum. For those of you who know PlaySense, who PlaySense parents, you will know that our little ones are taught by very experienced, fully qualified teachers. Lara is responsible directly for the training of these teachers and for maintaining the standards with our teachers. Our teachers come into your homes and conduct the schools in homes or online, depending if your little one is online or um, on an online school or at home. And Lara is responsible for that. She's also the mum of three little ones. Um, she's actually a super mum because she's actually a mum of three boys. And anybody who's got three lively boys <laughs> under the age of eight, I think they are um, in their home, knows that it's absolutely exhausting. So, um, and then finally, Lara is also an occupational therapist um, like I am, and she is a play advocate and very passionate about it. So thanks for joining us, La. We're going to hear from La a little bit later. Thanks, me. I know Lara actually told me I do need to introduce myself as well. And I can see she's giving me that look like, oh, are you going to introduce yourself? So I'm also an occupational therapist. I am the co-founder of PlaySense. Um, I am passionate about play. I am passionate about parents. And for me, if we can do anything to make your life a little easier, that's what it's all about. So tonight, that's what it's about, helping you to really come alongside your child to play with them and to develop them optimally. So as I said, we are definitely going to have some fun tonight. And so um, when we talk about having fun, one of the things that we talk about is that we're going to have prizes tonight, okay? So our prizes, oh, has something happened to my face? Oh my word, I don't know why this always does this. Let me just, sorry about Thank that. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for our amazing prizes tonight, we've got a couple of prizes that have got a thousand rand gift vouchers from Babies R Us in them. Baby, Babies R Us has come alongside us as well to be able to bring you these wonderful prizes. And we've got some other absolutely incredible prizes. Now, how are you going to win these prizes? We're not just going to randomly um, nominate. There are going to be a couple of games we're going to play tonight. And the very first one, get your pencils ready, okay, is you've got to add up the amount of times that from this moment onwards, I say the word play sense. 
And so just have a little pencil next to you, take a note of every time I say play sense, that's twice already. And the reason our adjudicator is here is because our adjudicator is sitting there with his pen in hand and he's gonna be doing exactly the same. So by the end of the evening, he will have added up exactly how many times I've said the word play sense, three times. And um, at that point, I'll say to you, how many times have I said it? You can pop your answers down and one of you will then win our grand prize, which has got a thousand grand gift voucher for Toys R Us, a Babies R Us, along with a couple of other things. And then we'll play a couple of other games as we go along. So that's what we're going to be doing um, this evening. And so without further ado, um, I'm going to um, kick off and I'm going to um, present. So let's pop that up, get our presentation going. And um, so there we go. Right. So I'd like you to start now to start this evening. And I want you to think about a time in your life when you were unbelievably happy, when you were really being playful. And um, I want you to think back to your childhood. You were doing something. So think about that. When you were a child, your absolute favorite game. Now, I've already got my one in my mind. I know exactly what my one is. I'm sure that many of you have got yours in your mind. But think about it. Immerse yourself in that just for a moment. Think about that game you were playing. So for some of us, it was riding our bike around the block. So if that's what it was for you, you can pop a number one in the chat. chat. Um, for some of you, it was an imaginary play game, something like um, teacher, teacher, or mummy, daddy, um, or I'm gonna start a bakery or a shop. So put a number two, if you were the ones who had imaginary play games. So with a, number, a couple of number twos there, then there might've been a couple of you who um, really enjoyed sport as your game. So there was always a game of soccer going in your backyard. And so this game you were thinking of was number three, which was a, a little sport game. So there could have been a sport game going, so a couple of sport people. Oh. So number one, because you were riding your bike around the block. Number two, you were an imaginary player. Number three, because you were doing something for sport. Um, and I'm sure there were other absolutely fabulous games. Maybe it was something like a board game, number four, a board game, like Monopoly or Snap or something like that. Um, so for my, by far the majority of you, I can see it was number two. And so for me as well, it was also a number two. It was an imaginary play game. And Barbies, of course. How can we forget Barbies? Of course. All right. So there you go. That was how we spent our time as children. And play is critically important. And what you've just done is immersed yourself back in what it was to actually be playful. So we're going to go on now and we're going to start to talk about really what it is um, as parents. And I think, you know, um, a, a lot of what happens is that we start to go through the motions. And I don't know about you, I um, have three children and I found myself a lot of the time saying things like, hurry up, come now, stop daydreaming. Come on, let's go. Everybody get in the car, put your shoes and socks on now, quickly. Eat up, eat up. We need to get ready for bath. We need to get ready for bed. Stop being silly. Are these the type of things that you have found yourself saying to your children? And if you have, um, there's no need to feel guilty about it, because remember, this is guilt-free parenting tonight. Um, but the reality is that actually, for most of us, that's exactly what's happened. And the reason that that's happened is that our world has become so consumed by three things. Tick boxes, goals, goal setting, and going places. And that's what it's all about. We really are all the time in a hurry getting our children from A to B. And so we really get very distracted and very consumed by achieving goals all the time. And of course, that is exactly the opposite of what play is. So the question is, have we lost our way? So um, for those of you who don't know, or who maybe do know, um, the United Nations has a department and that is called the United Nations or, or has a convention called the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. So this is the UNCRC. So what is it? Well, the UNCRC is a legally binding international agreement that sets out the civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights of every child, regardless of their race, their religion, or their abilities. Now, what fascinated me when I was researching a little bit about play, I came across um, general comment number 17, and that says, um, of a UNCRC that says the children's play is any behavior, activity or process initiated, controlled and structured by children themselves. And it takes place whenever and wherever opportunities arise. So that's what the, um, what the United Nations um, uh, child, care, um, child Care Rights or the Rights of the Human Child um, says. And it really is um, represents to us that there's a really strong legal uh, obligation that we have as parents and as educators to allow children to play. And so that's what this says, the children have the right to play. It is a basic human right. 
It goes on to say that play is absolutely fundamental to the physical, social, cognitive, emotional, and spiritual development of human beings. So we know that we have a mandate to allow children to play. The problem is two things. The one is that the education system has stopped us from doing that because they're saying we need to get on a certain path, we need to move our children ahead, we need to achieve goals, and we need to get our children what is called school ready, okay? And so this is really what's become the mandate that has been passed down to us from the education departments. In addition to that, society keeps telling us that our children can do better, be better, and succeed more. And so we all think that the only way that we can get our children there is by giving them something that is very goal-directed. So if any of you, um, I'm sure many of you have seen flyers and posters putting our children, and many of us do it, put our children into things like um, ball activities so that our children can be little golfers or into Mandarin for, for, for one-year-olds. And so whatever it is, there's all these kind of, um, there's all this noise in the environment that's saying to us that in order for our children to really succeed, they need to have some really structured, focused, goal-directed activities thrown at them. And we all buy into that. And we buy into that because we want the best for our children. But what we haven't realized and this, I think is where we need to go back to is actually the absolute best for our children is what is outlined in this basic human right. That play for this age is the absolute best thing we can do for our children. So if we understand that play is a basic human right and it is the mandate that we have been given and that we should give, have as parents is to play with our children, let's start by defining what play is. So a couple of things about play. There are a few words that really, for me, highlight what play is. Um, and these are a couple of them. The first thing is that play needs to be fun. It needs to be done for sheer enjoyment. Those belly laughs that come out of your child indicate that they're starting to, that they're playing and they're having fun. It needs to have an aspect of uncertainty because the minute that something becomes certain and you know exactly how it's going to end, it stops being play because it's um, unidirectional, it's going in one direction, it has one type of outcome, and that is not play because play, one of the characteristics is that it is completely uncertain. And what comes with uncertainty is flexibility, that we have to be able to fle be flexible and go with what flows out of that um, situation. And it also needs to be completely non-productive. So it needs to be something that doesn't have an outcome necessarily. So if you're giving your child a set of cookies and lines to color inside, that does not constitute play. And actually, if you think about it like that, neither does a puzzle. And I think that for many of us um, is where we start to get confused because we start to think that if we just set our child down with some puzzles, that means we're playing with them. But actually true play is for enjoyment with no purpose at all. It is also um, something that we become deeply immersed in. And um, I don't know how many of you um, have done a meditation or a mindfulness course. Well, I love my mindfulness courses. I've done a couple. And when you talk about mindfulness, you're talking about having an absolute um, kind of focus on the now, on the immediate moment, on what's going inside of your, on, on, on inside of your body. And that really is what mindfulness is about. What play is about is exactly that. It's the most mindful activity your child can do. They completely suspend reality. Time has no meaning. They are there in that moment. And another word that is associated with that is flow. Just really enjoying yourself. Play can also be defined as finding joy and finding um, your, your, um, your igniting your joy for life. And often another part of play is that play is collaborative, that another person can be involved in it. Um, and that is play. So now we've defined what play is, I think it's important to start to talk about why we really do need to play. So there are some of the reasons why you need to play. And here's a wonderful picture of a mum who's engaging with her little one in play. And there are many reasons for play, but I'm gonna start off with why it's important for you to play. Well, one of the things about play that you might be excited to hear is that play will make you younger. This is absolutely a given fact. In fact, there's been an enormous amount of research on the way that the brain works. And just recently, in fact, yesterday, I was listening to the most incredible podcast around preventing Alzheimer's and keeping mental agility. And one of the things that came up is that you need to have um, surprises and so that you maintain mental flexibility. And there's no opportunity that presents more surprises than play. Um, and so play certainly keeps your brain young and it keeps you young as well. We also know that in relationships and marriage, that couples who play together and have a playful nature also stay together. And so playing with your partner, playing um, together and having fun, suspending reality and having a good belly laugh is very important. It keeps you young and maintains your marriage. It helps you to connect with your inner child 
and with your child themselves. And I think that, um, you know, for many of you, I know that you've got your, your child's long-term um, emotional um, um, security or development at heart. And so uh, as little as your little ones are right now, at two and three years old, you might be thinking about what's gonna happen when your child is a teenager. Well, I can tell you that the only way that you're gonna keep your child close to you as a teenager is if you're playing with them. And that can only start if you create a foundation of play from when they're little, because that's how you connect. And so you connect with your child when they're little and you connect with them all the way through childhood. Another thing that happens as a parent, and I know you do it, I'm quite sure you do because I certainly do, is we overthink everything. We overthink how good we are as parents. We overthink how to help our children achieve their goals. We overthink parenting. We overthink potty training. We overthink weaning. We overthink everything about parenting. And what happens when we suspend reality and we in the moment is that we stop overthinking things and we become in the moment. And I'm gonna help you to see how to do that a little later. Other research has showed us that um, play rises our endorphins and it decreases stress hormones. Um, and as I said earlier, if you play with your child now, I promise you will play with them as a, two, as a teen as well. So what about playing for your child? What does that do? Well, Lara is going to have a look at this first point, which is how play grows our children's brains. It's critically important for growing brains. Some of the research has shown us that when animals play, their brains develop. So I know that um, we can't always um, take rat research and um, make it um, a potential human beings. But the truth is that what they found is that when rats are in a sterile environment versus rats who are in a very enriched environment of a maze that's really confusing, their brain density is higher, their brains grow better. And so we know that um, rats have more um, better brain development. And that was research by Diamond in 1964. So going back a really, really long time. And even in 1982 as well. Gordon in 2003 had a look at research that looked at a certain brain hormone called brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is actually the, the brain um, hormone that stimulates brain development. And they have found that when we're playing, and this goes for rats as well, but certainly for humans as well, there's more of this um, BDNF released. And so your brains actually develop more. So for those of you who are in the creative industries, you want to play. The more you play, the more creative your minds will be. That is why companies like Google have playrooms in their offices, because they want their employees to be creative. One of the very interesting things about research when they were talked about play is they looked at what about um, taking kind of 20 to 30 minutes out of the classroom and doing a PE class. Would that count as play? And they found that as wonderful as a PE class is because it gets kids active, it doesn't have the same effect as just absolutely free play. So play needs to be unstructured and fun in order for our children's brains to grow. It also helps children to deal with things. And when your little one is, um, is playing out role play, um, often they are processing an enormous amount about what's going on for them psychologically. And last year, Lara um, did some research and, and wrote an article for us on play being the panacea for the COVID isolation. And we know that a lot of what happened last year and even going forward, we may be looking ahead to it again, further again this year. And for those of you in the UK um, also going through it is that being isolated is not good for human beings. It's not good for any of us. But one of the ways that we can address that and deal with it is through play. So play helps little ones to deal with difficult things. And play also um, prepares your child to be a master player. And one of the things that we know about children in the future, and this is something that is very close to our hearts at PlaySense, because we know we are preparing little minds for a world that we don't know about. One of the things we know is that in the future, children are going to need to be creative and they are going to need to be players. They're going to need to play in the future. They need to be master players. So there are so many reasons why we really do need to um, ensure that our little ones are starting to play. So before we um, get on to how play works um, and, and before Lara takes it over, I'm going to just play a little game with you. All right, so this game is going to be a game for which you're going to win a prize. So the very first person who can tell us where in the world is Meg, so you're gonna pop it down in the chat, is gonna win one of our prizes. So here is where I am. Where in the world is Meg? No, have a look at my background, have a look at my background. Where in the world is Meg? Ah, there we go, we have a winner. I am in the night garden. Well done, I think that went, went to Pris, Prisley. 
Presley Naidu, well done. So um, our adjudicator over there, um, will you please uh, make sure that we've taken down that name? Thank you very much. All right, so with that out of the way, and for us understanding why pay is so important, I'm now going to hand over to Lara. Thanks, Meg. Okay, so um, it's so lovely to be with you tonight. And I'm really just going to look at a little bit of the brain science behind play. So have a look at that picture. Um, did you know that in the first 1001 days, your baby's brain reaches 85% of its adult size with 1 million neural connections being formed a second? If you look carefully at that picture, you'll see the same amount of nerve cells are being developed from picture to picture. But what's the difference? How is this brain growing? Well, firstly, the cells are connecting with each other and passing messages from the environment through your child's senses and movement throughout the brain for processing. And the more these cells talk to each other, the stronger the connection and also the thicker those cells become. So you can see that those um, little nerve cells are getting thicker and they're getting more and more connected. And they actually grow an insulating layer called myelin. Now, repeated actions strengthen certain connections and others are pruned away. So on the next slide, you'll see the two, three top reasons of this relationship between what we know about the brain and play. So the first big idea is that play builds brains. And as I've just alluded to is that that first picture there on the, on the top left are little brain cells. In the next picture, you'll see how they begin to connect and become circuits through these actions, which play really, really evokes in your child. And when, um, when we repeatedly play games with our children, if you think of how much um, your child loves the same story, how they love peekaboo, how they love playing hide and seek, that's because they actually love repetition. And I always love to think of it as this hiking trail on the bottom right. If you went on a hike this weekend um, and you could see a clear path like that, you will definitely finish the hike. But imagine a very um, unsteady path or um, one that's just, you know, not many people have walked through. It will be very difficult for you to know the way. And that's just like our brain. Our, the little one's brains are forming these connections through repetition. And so playing the same games over and over again, moms and dads, is so critical. They can't actually get bored at this age. So the second big reason, uh, and just, just another way to show you how, how amazing this is, because I think we're a little bit scared of repetition. I think our culture tells us that more, um, more is better, faster is better, new is better. But just look at this amazing cycle. It's so natural and it's primed into our babies' brains. Little children who are healthy and, and feel loved and safe are naturally curious at the top at about one o'clock over there. When they are like that, they, they explore. Um, and when they explore, they discover something. And when, when your baby's brain discovers something, it actually releases um, endorphins and, and chemicals, serotonin um, um, in the brain. And that evokes pleasure in the brain. And when our brains experience pleasure, they want to experience it again. And so that's why your little one will keep going vroom, vroom, vroom with the car or watching it go down a slide. Um, and when they repeat, they experience mastery. Now mastery, when a child experiences mastery, they feel that they are in control of their little world. They, they feel um, good positive self-esteem and they grow in confidence. And when I grow in confidence, I'm more curious again. And you can see how play and um, how that repetition is built into how our children learn. Then the second reason, um, of how play and relationships work together. Play builds relationship, which builds the brain. And I just love this quote. Go on YouTube, look for this video by um, Harvard professor Shonkov, who said, it's impossible to overestimate how important the early years are. And he says, just 15 minutes, any time of the day, of a very particular type of play called serve and return. So in that picture, you get a little bit of a glimpse, but me, won't you play the video on the next slide? And I want everyone out there to watch and, and see what is this dad and this little one doing? What is the magic in what each actions the little ones are taking and the dad's taking? Okay, they need to work on that, right? Yes, okay. Did you understand it though? No. No, okay, all right. <laughs> 
Oh, no, no, not, not this one. This is, this is the grand finale of this one. Okay, the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. That's what I was wondering. I don't know what they're going to do next season because they did some stuff this time. Exactly what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, don't bring that in. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was thinking that, yeah. Yeah. Like, go somewhere else with that, but don't break it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I said. Then it was like, ah, 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 you know what I'm saying? And I was like, what in the world? But don't do that here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? I thought the same thing. <laughs> we think a lot alike, huh? <laughs> That's crazy. Right. So is that not just the cutest thing? And and this this video for me just proves that um we are our children's favorite toy. I mean, there's no toy in that picture, right? There's a, a screen, but but the screen is actually bringing about this interaction. And what's happening? Well, this is known as serve and return. The baby serves through babbles, gazes, gestures, and sometimes even touch or pointing. The adult notices and returns the serve. They narrate, hey? He puts words into his other one's mouth. He mimics what the baby's saying, and he, and he comes up with a whole conversation. Um, and then he pauses, and he lets his child serve again, and he returns the serve, and they repeat this over and over again. Now, what research has shown is that it builds the architecture of the brain. And a lot of us think that we should only talk to our babies when they talk, um, as in when they're able to use words. But, but look at that baby. He was not using words, and yet they were having a conversation. Now, this is the foundation for lifelong learning and emotional well-being. This actually builds the architecture of your baby's brain. So go and Google, serve and return, and, and learn a little bit more about it. Then the third point is that play builds self-regulate. Okay, there, so that's, sorry, there's the steps for serve and return. Um, yeah, so you share the focus, you support and encourage, you name it. So narrating, taking turns, and then practice endings and beginnings, being respectful of when your baby's had enough or looks away and ends the game. And then the third point is that play builds self-regulation. Now, self-regulation has really become a super skill for us at Play Sense. When I set about to write the curriculum, I thought, what is the one thing? If we could give it to every single child, we'd be, we'd be setting them up not just for school readiness, but for life readiness. And there was a researcher called Michelle in the 1970s at Stanford. And um, he put some children in a room. They were between four and six years old with a marshmallow in front of them. And he said, if you can wait for 15 minutes, when I come back and that marshmallow is still there, I'll give you another marshmallow. Now, they have followed the, up those children throughout their lives. And researchers have found that children who were able to wait longer um, for the preferred reward tended to have better life outcomes measured by SAT scores. So those um, American kind of matric scores, educational attainment, so beyond school, body mass index, lower body mass index, and other life measures. And this was the start of a body of research on self regulation Now, it can look like just impulse control, but it is way more than that. It's the ability to name our own emotions and act appropriately, as well as recognize other emotions and have others' emotions and have empathy for them and act towards them in an appropriate way. It's also problem solving and being able to pay attention. And these are the skills that our children need for the future. Well, how are these developed? So if we know that's the super skill, how do we develop it? And it's just the most amazing thing. It's actually developed through pretend play. And sadly, I saw comments earlier that, um, that in the schools because of COVID um, and they can't share clothing, that dress up has, has definitely fast disappeared from screen preschools because of COVID, but even more so because of our emphasis on academic learning. Now there's a, um, a, a well-known child psychologist, Vygotsky, and he concluded that of all activities, pretense or pretend affords young children the greatest opportunity to become self-regulated. So I've got three pictures there to explain why. The first way is through 
substitution. So when a child takes a block and pretends it's a fence and that that's a zoo, and they're actually changing the object's usual meaning and they're relying on their thought and not impulse. It's the same when they pick up a block and go vroom, vroom, vroom. Um, and block is obviously a car in their minds. Then the sec one, second one is following social rules. They willingly pl place constraints on their own actions. For example, lying still for your doctor friend to examine you. You can't pretend with another person unless both of you agree to what you are pretending. So players conform to a set of rules and practice conforming to such rules develops self-control over time. And then the last one, very importantly, again in research, children who engage in more pretend play actually have more self-talk. And this assists us in planning and controlling our own behavior. Um, what's also been found, which is so fascinating, is they start to have what if reasoning. And if you think of that question, what if reasoning is all about creativity. Now, why is this so key? Well, I think it's because, sorry, one back knee. Okay, we've lost a slide, doesn't matter. <laughs> Children today don't know how to play because we, as parents, have forgotten how to play. We've got technology, we've got over-scheduling, Meg's already alluded to, and structured, structured extramurals. There's a lack of safe outdoor play. Um, before children would go outside and play with other children, who are different ages. We think that everybody needs to be the same age. And actually that just means that our play partners are as inexperienced as we are. And then this academic focus, which children are just ahead to full. And so why is it so key that we look at this? Is because our children are starting to say, I'm bored, amuse me. And I love this quote. It says, without adult support, the play of children cannot reach mature dramatic play. Guiding children to play has to be as intentional and systematic as teaching content-related skills, but without being adult-directed. Thanks, Meg. Thank you, La. Um, can you hear me? Okay, yes. I seem to, yeah, um, yeah. I, I lost sound there for a minute. Right, okay, so we're gonna play another game. We are going to play Where in the World is Meg again. So let's have a look where my background is this time. So you don't have to say where I am really, but let's see if anyone can pop this into the chat. Are you guys ready? Where in the world is Meg, anybody? Let's see if anyone can get it right. Ah, there we go, straight away. On the Star Trek Command Center, right. Perfect. Well done. So we have another winner there, Adjudicator. If you can get that name for us, I would really appreciate it. Cool. Okay. So I'm back in my world right now. And we're going to go and start to talk about how to play. Um, what I've noticed is that a couple of you have actually said, oh, I've been doing it all wrong. Oh, I love puzzles and coloring in. What about that? And um, it was very important to us that we did not want anybody to come away with feeling guilty today because none of us get it right. And in actual fact, um, there are, there's very good research that tells us that if you only get it right 20% of the time, your kid's going to be absolutely great. So don't worry that you feel like you're not getting it right. But I am going to give you a couple of pointers now. And these are them. So before I get started, I want to ask quickly, um, how many of you remember where you were um, when the airplane flew into the Twin Towers. Do any of you remember? So I, it's one of those things that most people will actually go, I know exactly where I was when that happened. And for many of you, you might have been playing, you might have been at school. Um, so I want to tell you where I was. So I was in a tiny room. It was about a meter by two meters big, under a set of stairs in a very claustrophobic space. And I was sitting on a chair, on a kiddie's chair, on a little kiddie's chair. Now that space was actually my pantry. So I was sitting in the pantry on a kiddie's chair and I was facing the back of my son who was also sitting on a kiddie's chair facing forward. So there he was two years old facing forward and on my lap was my six month old baby and I was sitting behind him. And we were actually playing aeroplane, aeroplane. And it is always stuck in my mind about how coincidental that was that in that exact moment, I got the phone call um, on the home phone to say, go and turn on the television right now because there's something you need to see. And that was when the first plane had flown into the tw Twin Towers. Now I tell you this because I was playing a game of imaginary play with my son. And I'm gonna go through a couple of the things that I think are really, really important for us to play with our little ones. So the first thing that we know about play is that you have to get involved. 
and you really have to get into your child's um, play space. And the reason for that is that we have learned that the magic doesn't happen in the game that you play, it happens in the relationship that happens through that game. So when you are playing with your little one and they are playing, being the pilot in an aeroplane and they're having to communicate with you what they're doing, you are entering their play world. And entering your child's play world is critically important. It allows you to co-regulate with them, to help them to understand how they're feeling and to really relate for them what's going on in their little world. So it's very important that you get into the mind of your child and you do pretend play. So that's the first tip I'm gonna give you tonight is get involved, it's critically important. Now I'm going to show you a video now. This was um, one of our PlaySense mums last year and this was in the middle of lockdown and I phoned Asia and I wanted to chat to her about what was going on for her and Khaled as they were in lockdown. And this is what her journey and her experience of playing with her child was. <laughs> in some ways, I don't know if you found this, but I've got three kids and I found that having three kids and running a busy business and everything, I ended up like kind of only doing the stuff with the kids that was essential, like lifts and, you know, meal times and, and just the stuff that kind of ticked the boxes. And I, I think along the way, because our lives are so busy, we kind of have forgotten how to play. And yeah. um, I do think the play sense, I mean, that was one of the big intents with the program was that parents would actually learn how to play again and, you know, yeah. kind of find that that playfulness inside of themselves have you found that is is so totally I feel like I, I definitely know how to play and I've got like instead so usually I would drop Khaled at play sense and then I would go to the gym so now instead of gymming I'm actually doing play sense is like it's like a workout because I have to run <laughs> around with him and really um get involved in all the activities and I do find it makes made me more playful and also understand him to get down to his level and really understand what he's going through I feel like for parents as well, assisting kids, I feel like my imagination, I'm in a creative field. I feel like everyone needs to be creative, whatever job you're doing, especially mm. now during this time. We're all trying to mm. be creative with how we earn money and all kinds of things. And I feel like he's really, like the program actually opens up my own mind because I think last week we did the air, airplane theme and I had to draw clouds on the tiles and then we were jumping through the clouds and pretending to be airplanes. And I, I actually felt really positive afterwards because yeah. I was obviously playing the game with him because I'm also in play since now I'm yeah. his classmate so that's an experience of a play since mum and she just really showed us exactly what it was like to be fully immersed in your child's world and how to learn to play with them it really just takes a step and one of the gifts we're going to give you tomorrow which Lara will tell you about later is a little playbook that you're going to do with your little ones the next tip I'm going to give you is to do Watch, Wait and Wonder. And um, I came across this book, which I've now bought from Amazon. It's, it's the book, the, the cover that you can see there. And I want to read you an excerpt out of this book. It says, if you want to see a whale, you will need to see a window. Well, not just a window, but an ocean and a time for thinking about whalish shapes. And maybe is it a whale or maybe it's not a whale. You can't very well see a whale either from a snugly comfort of your favorite spot at home. You have to ignore other distractions like roses and ships in the distance on the water and people on these ships. There's no time to be thinking of pirates. Don't let pelicans, tiny creepy crawlies or clouds lead you astray with their smiles, movements or fluffy forms. No, you need to stay on the course. You need to keep both eyes open, watching the water and waiting for the wonder of a whale. Now, the reason I read this to you is that that's how I want you to be when you're playing with your child. We call it Watch, Wait and Wonder. So go away tonight and set up a box, a big um, plastic box or a little crate and put a whole lot of imaginary play activities in there. It can be a bottle and a dolly or it can be um, maybe some Lego and some dinosaurs. I found a dinosaur on the beach today, by the way, and I think that he wanted to come along and listen to us today. So put these type of things inside of your box and then tomorrow and Every single day for 10 minutes, take that box out, put your cell phone aside and play Watch, Wait and Wonder. So what does that mean? That means actually sitting with your little one, abandoning all other thoughts, just like the book said, and wondering about what your little one wants to do. So you're going to watch what they're doing. You're going to wait and see if they're going to engage with you, if they're going to draw you into their game, which I promise they will. And then you're going to wonder at the absolute sheer beauty of your child's play. And when you do that, you properly enter their world. Now, I can tell you what's going to happen is that when that happens, they're going to look at you really, really strangely, because why are you just sitting there? Why are you not looking at your phone? Why are you in my space? They are going to be completely enthralled by this. But within a couple of seconds, they're going to draw you in. It's going to be one of the most exciting moments of your day tomorrow. And this 
is an absolute promise. You need to do that. So that's number two. So get involved, watch, wait, and wonder. Number three, make believe play. Laura's spoken about it. When we play aeroplane, aeroplane, when we play the activities with our little one, we set them up for the boardroom because when you are playing to be um, somebody else, when you are executing a thought that's in your mind, that's exactly what a CEO does. A CEO takes a whole lot of thoughts in their mind, the resources around them, and creates a really high level game. And that's what you want your little one to do. You want to prepare them to be little CEOs in the future. The fourth thing is to have open-ended activities. Please don't have closed-ended activities. We know that something like Lego, when it's got a plan to go with it, um, has way less creativity going on than if it's open-ended. So head for open-ended activities with your little ones that don't have a specific direction. And then finally, pop um, every, well, not finally, but pop every uh, play into your everyday routines. So when your baby, when you need to set the table, get your little one to set the table with you. You can make it special for our prince or our princess who's coming home from work and you can lay the table beautifully. Play restaurant, restaurant and let them serve the family. At bedtime, get involved in stories and play hand shadows on the wall. At mealtimes, play here comes the aeroplane to get all those mouthfuls in and make the plate, plate look fun. And then of course at bath time, use bubbles and science experiments, like which one's heavier, what's going to float? These are all games that will really keep your child engaged, have fun, but they'll learn from at the same time. Be curious. And, and I think curiosity is such an important um, aspect of any human being, but your child is at that age where they're asking why all the time, and they're doing that because they've got this curiosity. Make sure that you join them on it and ask them why, and ask them where, and ask them what. What can we be when we put a hat on our heads? Because when you ask them those questions, you ignite their imagination. And finally, before I hand back to Lara, be silly. Be absolutely silly with your little one. Get those belly laughs going and really engage with them in play. So that brings me to the end of the how of tonight. And now I'm gonna hand back to Lara and I'm going to let Lara just tell you a little bit about her top five toys for toddlers. Thanks, Meg. Um, you'll need to, uh, I need to be on the screen. So, um, so we just want to thank um, Babies R Us for sponsoring the gift vouchers and toys. And we went shopping at Babies R Us and I chose four really simple toys that I'd love to show you. So the first one is Play-Doh. So um, good old Play-Doh. Now this is a wonderful set. It's non-toxic. Each each color has a different um, smell, so it's great for the sensory system. And there's four colors, so red, blue, green, and yellow. Now, obviously, um, it's wonderful for fine motors. So here I've rolled a little sausage or a roll. Um, you can teach, show your child how to make balls. And obviously, the ball could become an egg in a nest. Um, you could be birds together. Then another great one I love doing is pushing um, blocks um, with the Play-Doh. So pretending or most little ones know about Bob the Builder and that um, you, you, you bring in matching colors in a very playful way using the imagination. So I've got my blue Play-Doh and my blue block and I'm putting it there. There's my cement and I'm going to build a house as Bob the Builder. Then obviously you can make food and you can enjoy the sensory um, stimulation of the smell and the color. So the next toy is these wonderful building blocks. So these are Duplos, but I recommend having a Duplo set as well as a wooden set in your home. Now, why? Well, there is no right or wrong, as Meg said already, open-ended play. You can encourage your child to build anything in their imagination. But some of our favorites are towers and castles, building landscapes, towns and houses. And the research has shown that it's a pre-maths activity, that it promotes creative thinking and it's proven to affect your child's mathematical ability when they have to construct. They're building something in their minds and they're having to build it in 3D. So um, wooden blocks are also amazing. They have a different texture, they're natural, and they can also become absolutely anything. You can um, also group colors together with your little one um, when you've got the colored blocks. Then the next one is this fantastic set. So I love it because it's felt, so it's got a texture. And this is the Melissa and Doug felt food sandwich set. So um, it's got all these little felt bits. Um, so here I've got a roll, a brown roll, and um, I've got an onion ring, and I've got some mustard, 
and I've got a, an egg and I've got some bacon. And you can play obviously all kinds of restaurant games or cooking games and uh, boys and girls just love cooking. And um, what you can do is say, can you make me a sandwich please? And you can give them instructions to follow. Um, and you can see how much of these games actually develop the child as well as the imagination. So pretend to be a chef, and then you can say, can you give me something yellow on my um, sandwich? And you can see if they know this, the yellow, or you can ask them to group things according to shape. So there's a whole bunch of things that are, for example, round here. So I can ask them to give, can you put all the round things on my sandwich? Um, can you put three, any three things on my sandwich? Um, and obviously there's different textures. And then memory games, I absolutely love. Um, playing this where you, you put a four or five items out and you ask them to look at it and then you take one. You say that, you know, the naughty ants have come to the picnic and they've stolen something. Can you see what they've stolen? So I absolutely love that set and it's great for little ones from about 18 months all the way to, I would say, even eight years old. And then um, this set is also really great. This is a Fisher Price music set. Um, so we've also got our CD there, which you can get off our uh, website and the PlaySense shop, but um, making a noise, I don't call it music, with toddlers and babies, it's noise making, but it really develops the sensory system. It develops language because we're going to sing, we're going to hear, so receptive, um, understanding as well as expressive, saying the words. It also develops fine motor skills because I'm having to grasp different things. There's even a little um, crocodile shaped flute and some castanets and the, um, the drum is actually the case for the whole set. Um, you know, and, and I want to encourage you to, to, set, to ask your baby to make a pattern, um, you know, and then you copy them. And actually, um, you serve, so that's a serve and return example. Then play a tune off the CD. Meg was playing our dinosaur um, song, which is um, one of the tracks, and play along with the drums. Using both hands together is a, a critical skill for learning to, to even write later on. And then, of course, we have got the box that everything came in. So how funny is it often when you buy your child um, at some toys and they want to play with the box? So in our play sense groups, we use boxes all the time. And on the next slide, you'll see some ways we use them. So there's a small box being made into a camera and that little one is taking photos. She's got a hat on, she's in the jungle and she, off she is looking for animals in the jungle. The next little boy's made a tractor with his boxes and um, he is absolutely loving. He's got a wooden hammer and he's fixing the tractor. And then the bottom one, you can see these little ones are made houses. They've made a little train with a whole bunch of boxes. And I even have something my son made this week I don't know if you can see that, but it's an aquarium. So we find the, the fish from the top and um, he can use this as a puppet, you know, baby shark, they will love that song. And he can have his own little puppet show um, and be a diver. So boxes, 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 because it's so open-ended. It stirs choice, control and imagination. It can become anything. And so Meg alluded to the free toolkit we're also going to be sending you. So go have a look for those toys at Babies R Us. But the free toolkit is a wonderful PDF we're going to be sending you in your emails tomorrow. And every single day, we're going to give you two activities, either sensory, um, uh, gross mode or outdoor play, art and imaginary play. Everything is included in terms of what you need to get. And um, just like Anushka's just said, painted toilet rolls and string and all those things will be listed there for you to find. And um, books will be suggested. So we really hope you have lots of fun um, with some, some guidance on how to implement what Meg and I have said this evening. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Lars. So as we finish off this evening, um, I want to just remind you a little bit about what we are. Oh, sorry. There we go. Oh, there we go, about what we have said tonight. So when it comes to your child's play, the first thing is remember the child-led is critically important. If you are totally directing it, it's not open-ended play, okay? So first thing is let your child lead it. Number two, you can guide the play. You can give them ideas and ask them questions like, here's a hat, what can we do with it? Um, and then they take it and tell you that you're gonna play cowboys and Indians or whatever it was that they were thinking. And so let them lead it. 
narrate everything for them, just like that daddy did. I love that video. It has to be one of my most favorite parenting videos because he was narrating a whole story for his little one. So get involved and narrate. Please be silly because getting your little one to laugh is one of the most important things. And when I alluded to the fact that earlier on that when you play with your toddler, you will play with your teen. This is what it's about. Teenagers need their parents to be silly, frivolous and on their level. And if you do it from the early days, it's very, very um, um, beneficial long term. Be present in the moment. It's the most wonderful way to be mindful. Serve and return. Watch for those little signals and do watch, wait and wonder. And then finally, repeat, repeat, repeat. Your child will be doing it over and over again. And that's what they're supposed to be doing. That's exactly how they learn from their world. So as we finish off, I'm going to finish off now and I'm going to change my background just once more because we've got one more prize, prize to give away. And I want to see who can guess where I am now. Anybody can guess where I am. I'm in school, you're close. I'm in a play sense class. Thank you very much. So our play sense classes happen in your homes. Um, they happen either online so that you can direct it with your child or your nanny can be involved. Or we have incredible teachers who are highly qualified who will come into your home and match you with six other like-minded families and actually conduct the class in your home. There is no better place for your toddler to be at this age. And I really do encourage you, for those of you who are thinking about play schools, to give it a go. It really will be the best experience of your life. It will be a remarkable journey. We can promise you that. So we've come to the end of our evening and I'm going to ask our adjudicator, please, to pop the names up right now, sending a direct message to me, adjudicator, of who has won each of our prizes. So let's have a look. Um, it looks like our adjudicator might have done it. Aha, uh -huh, um, yes, it has, okay. So let's have a look. All right, so there we go. All right, so they are um, adjudicator, while I'm looking at these, while I'm drawing these, hamper number one, the thousand rand babies are us vouchers, got to go to the person that said, that has the right number of how many times we said play sense. So um, how many times play sense was seen this evening until, until the slide, um, pop it up there. Our adjudicator is going to draw that name and pop it on my list here. But in the meantime, hamper number two, which is the babies are us gift voucher, plus a dino activity kit, plus a dinosaur stomp CD, plus a dino tail, everything you need is going to go to Presley Naidu. So you are the first winner, Presley Naidu. The second winner who gets hamper number three, the dino activity kit, the dinosaur stomp kit, and a dino tail, these beautiful dino tails that you can see on the screen, who won, um, who guessed Star Trek correctly, goes to Elmery, Elmery Nundum, I think it is, Elmery. Then hamper number four, dinosaur activity kit, dinosaur stomp CD, and a dino tail. So you're going to get in that dino activity kit, you get all the activities you need for our playbook as well. That is going to go to Samantha Young. So Samantha Young gets that one. And then hamper number one, the winner of the person who got the right number of times we said play sense. Okay. And actually, my adjudicator has not told me what the right answer is. So we'll leave that one. But my, um, we won't tell you what the right answer was. But we will tell you that the winner of the Thousand Rand Babies Rescue Sparcher plus the Dino Activity Kit plus Dinosaur Stump CD plus the Dino Tail is, drum roll, Shireen Gallant, you are the winner. Shireen Gallant, you're the winner of the hamper number one. So well done to all of you. Um, we do have one more hamper to give away, which is a dinosaur stomp CD and dino tail. And that is going to be for one lucky winner who fills out our survey. So we have, are going to load off now as Lara and I leave, we are going to load um, our survey up and we are going to, um, um, one person who fills that in will win our final um, hamper. So thank you all so much. Thank you for joining us. And if this can be the start of your play revolution, if this changes the way that you engage with your child, it will change your parenting journey. It will change your relationship with your child. It will change your child's life for good. And that's really what this is all about. So with great passion and a huge amount of excitement, I'm going to bid you farewell from myself, Meg Forum, from Lara Schoenfeld, my co-founder, and from our entire team at PlaySense. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night.